Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this station's mask. COVID-15. That's awesome. That's funny. But uh, we are recording now, and Greg, how are you doing? I am great, Aaron. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for thank you for doing this. Thank you for agreeing to come on. I know we were just talking about Rossi and Anthony. Shout out to you, man. Thanks for this connection. Thank you, Anthony. I know I talk a lot of junk about you, but deep down, you're, <laughs> you're, you're an okay guy. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's, great. he's great but uh we had when he when he messaged me he was like would you be interested in interviewing somebody that's local that's doing an independent horror movie and i was like hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> send them my way i said have him email me or whatever the case may be and just because he knows like i do i do a lot of interviews and and reviews if they come across you know with um indie horror a lot that's great and actually there is one that is out now on amazon prime it's called jed jed j-e-d yes and some of the nicest people i've had on here which no disrespect to anybody but the cool thing i had them on here before the movie came out i believe yeah before the movie came out and they sent me i still didn't watch the movie which i feel like an asshole for not watching the movie i just been so damn busy but i'm going to watch it so we actually have some things coming up but anyway i didn't watch the movie yet i'm going to but they sent me a screener before the movie was even like out on like amazon prime and all that stuff and the cool thing about it was when they came on everybody that was in this movie is either a part of and correct me if i'm wrong or what's the other word like if you're cool with somebody a part of or like i don't want to say friends there's another word for it and i (sighs) anyway i'll just say a part of or cool with the lgbtq community oh ally Ally. thank you you. that's the word ally and they were just the cool thing was they're just like Thank you for letting us come on your show, blah, 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 and all that cool stuff. And I'm like, of course. Why? Like, what? I I don't care who people, what, whatever you, your preference is, I don't care. And I was like, coming from me being black, <laughs> like, I already know how it is to be like looked at just because of whatever, just because we're different, different. I'll say that in quotes. Yeah. So, but no, like, they sent me a, um, a thank you card and all this other stuff. They sent me a thank you card. They sent me pictures of stills from the movie and stuff. I'm like, that's like, you don't, I don't expect stuff like that. I just want people to come on my show and, you know, we talk whatever. And when you're up at, at the very least, when your episode comes out, share that. That's, that's all I will do. And, I'll check but, out uh, that movie too. Was it filmed locally? No, they're, they're from North Carolina. Oh, wow. And the cool thing, I don't know how they found me. They, they heard, they like the cool thing about it was they heard about me from either another indie source or just social. I don't know how they heard about me. They reached out to me via email and, you know, just I was like, hell yeah, come on the show. That's awesome. But I'm gonna be working with them soon with some other cool stuff, which I can't say while I'm recording at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> All <laughs> but, uh, right. Some, they're really, really nice people. And I just I just brought that up because like again with last year with the craziness and all the hate from last year. Yeah. And then like the year before, October of twenty nineteen, which feels like 10 years ago i swear (laughs) but the cool we were at a because me and you were talking about cons a little while ago we were at a horror convention it was me my brother my wife and i think my wife was walking around because me and my brother were getting ready to do i brought the podcast again we're gonna do a panel and i think the panel was like 2000 horror movies or whatever you know like 2000 and newer and nobody came to i don't know if they just did oh, no <laughs> happened, but no but did, only two people showed up no, like we were expecting because every other room we did was damn near full but only two people showed up and it was cool because 
we talked. Well, here's what happened. I, I think I left to run to do something, give my wife something or whatever. I came back and I see my brother just sitting there talking. So I'm in there. We're just talking, talking. Then we, I was like, I guess this panel isn't happening. So we just pulled up some chairs and just sat there and talked with them. And again, a part of the LGBTQ community. And we were just sitting there talking and being just talking in general about horror and then more, you know, deeper things. And then just talk again, how I was just saying how people, they look down on people just because of differences, which I think is the dumbest thing in the world. Me but too. I'm just like, I was like, trust me, we under we a hundred percent to a different extent, of course, but we a hundred percent understand where you're coming from because we're black men and we're looked at as feared for whatever reason. I have no idea. <laughs> well, hopefully that's changing. I, you know, it's, I hope so too, man. It's been changing, but it seems to be going too slowly. <laughs> it's for everyone. My God. Yeah, and I didn't if, want to. I didn't anything. If huh? last year was any proof of that, it's that it's going too slowly. It's, it's like very so much. Slow. It's 2021. <laughs> Let's put it all behind us. But yeah, the long road still. But yeah. I appreciate. Thank you for having me on. I, I'm oh, of course. I'm a people is I, the way I am, man. If as long as you're a nice person, a good person, I'll have you on. I'll promote the hell out of your stuff, horror related. <laughs> Other than that, awesome. <laughs> I don't care what color you are, what you like. That's not my, the way I look at it. As far as, and I'm not saying people should hide their affection, but as, well, as far as what people do behind closed doors is nobody's business. I agree. As long as you're not harming a child or an animal. I Other agree. than that, if you're uh, consenting adults, have have fun, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, just let's let's hope it's changing. Let's hope this whole these yeah. next four years, well, more than four years, but these next four years, let's hope they start the building blocks of change for the better for everybody, not just a select few or whatever for everybody to be better and nicer and all that stuff. But yeah. (laughs) So an indie (laughs) horror film. Yeah. Locally upstate New York. That is awesome. Thank you. So we, um, I'm actually, I, I'm, I'm technically not local. I'm just stuck here. (laughs) <laughs> and I stuck here. I mean, we were supposed to be finished filming in October or no, in November. And we realized we're not going to finish filming before it's, the snow comes. Mm-mm. So we were going to drive back to LA and then LA became like the COVID hotspot of the country. And we got a house sitter and my sister, uh, my sister who used to work with Anthony Rossi's wonderful geologist wife, Steph, um uh her house sh- she and her husband are remote teaching at their um place in Maine and oh. uh so we we just decided to stay and they are happy that we're staying because it means the pipes won't burst <laughs> in this horrible cold so um we're doing uh we're basically we shot a bunch of footage and then right now we're doing all the prep work for the rest of the footage which has been really great, actually. And it's been like, because we, um, uh, do you want a little background? Oh, sure. So my name's Greg Ivan Smith. I'm a filmmaker. I live in LA with my husband, Michael. And um, in 2010, I had a bunch of quite successful shorts. And I've done a bunch of horror shorts and some other stuff. But um, in 2010, I put out a short called Remission. And it was about the fear of cancer returning, eating you alive. Oh, and it's like uh, I think it's like 13 minutes long, maybe 11 minutes long. And it did really well. It got into a bunch of film festivals and it won a couple horror awards. And um, and it's it's mostly a one man show. Uh, mm-hmm. And Michael played the lead character, Sam. And he starts uh, he's waiting. Uh, it's about this character, Sam, waiting for a biopsy result. And he's alone in his cabin and he starts seeing this figure in around the cabin and in the cabin and he doesn't know if he's imagining it or if if it's uh something to do with his fear of the cancer returning if he's imagining it or uh is someone there actually hunting him stalking Mm -hmm. him um and it's uh 
it did really well. And, and I've sort of been sitting on it for 10 years and always, and we shot it in this house in Amsterdam um, in the summer of 2009, probably. And um, with a small crew and we had two actors and it was, it was really well received. And, and um, it's re uh, it played at, one of my favorite screenings was it played at the Palm Springs International Short Fest. And it was a sold out crowd uh, of 600 and to have 600 people scream at the same time was like, that's awesome. It was <laughs> it's like the best, <laughs> the best feeling in the world. And I had made these, um, uh, because it's about, it's sort of a medical themed horror movie on some level. I made, um, I collected prescription bottles and I put, I, I bought, um, those very expensive M&Ms and I got them in colors like gray and pale pink and sort of sick blue. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you, I put writing on them and it said remission and it gets worse, which is the, the tagline, it gets worse, and a picture of Michael on them. And so I made little medicine bottles and I put my screening times on the prescription labels and I just started leaving them all over Palm Springs. So people would say, oh, that someone, you know, someone forgot their prescription and then they'd read it and it would say, you know, at so-and-so theater at 7 p.m. Wednesday, the whatever. That's so awesome. And so they became, that became, uh, like, uh, we, I got in the paper, like, two days into my time in Palm Springs. So my screening wasn't for five days, so I had this sold-out screening. So it was, like, really exciting. And I, um, and then since then, I've been doing a bunch of um, commission shorts and a, a bunch of them. I, did, I had a horror short called Scary Larry, which I want to turn into a feature film. Um, which uh, won some awards and and a, a couple others. And uh, I have this other one that came out last year called Glasgow, um, which is set in the 70s. And I want to turn that into a feature. But I've sort of been sitting on this idea of turning remission into a feature because it's such a contained uh, sort of um, claustrophobic story. Mm -hmm. And so my husband, Michael, who plays Sam, and I were in L.A., and all of our employment canceled for the year like all of it so wow. we were yeah so um you know i i do a bunch of, i work as a filmmaker sometimes and then when i'm not i was i've been a tour guide at jet propulsion laboratory nasa and um i teach and michael's a working actor and when he's not acting he's teaching or he's a costume designer and you know we have these jobs and just like by the end of March, I'm also a stand-up comic. Oh, nice. And um, all my stand-up shows canceled. <laughs> like, it was just, you know, like everyone else, all my stuff just got, like, yep. chopped, chopped, chopped. And then Michael lost all his, his employment. And then we're just sitting there, and we're like, huh, we suddenly have all this free time. And then Roger Corman, the amazing master of the B-movie, Roger Corman, put out... I think it was in April or May, put out a quarantine film festival contest. And I'm like, let's, let's do it. It was a two minute movie, had to be within your own house, mm -hmm. had to be shot on a phone and you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't, couldn't endanger anyone. You had to be all in your own. And so we made one, it's called Eggshell. It was really fun. And I was like, what are we doing? Let's, let's make a feature. Let's just you and I make a feature. So, so um, I started writing the feature version of Remission, which I had no, I had like all these notes compiled, mm -hmm. um, uh, and and uh, everything sort of sort of like because of the quarantine, everything sort of started falling in place. Like um, the house that we shot it in was going to be empty when we wanted to film it because they were, my sister's was in Maine. Um, uh, we uh, could, I just fixed my car so we could drive across the country because I was a little worried about, I didn't want to fly. And I, um, so I, I, uh, I bought a black magic pocket cinema 4k camera and we loaded up the car and we drove out here. Um, we did a seed and spark fundraiser. Um, for because we we thought okay the goal is michael and i are going to make this horror movie 100 percent by ourselves mm -hmm. so i am the entire crew and sometimes for a little bit sometimes an actor 
Michael is in every scene and the main actor. And also when he's not, he's also crew and he's doing costume design and art direction and making props. So we're like, what we, we can either make a feature film or we can just sit around, you know, picking our nose in LA. So we got a house sitter and we drove across the country and um, uh, I finished the script and we finally started shooting. And what I really, what we didn't realize, we got some, um, most of the film takes place on this property, but there were some shots. We got amazing support um, from the Amsterdam, New York. So we're in Amsterdam, New York, which is just outside of Schenectady for anyone who yeah. doesn't know. And um, the, Amster the people at the Amsterdam library were like, yes, film here. And we're coming from LA where everyone's like, I don't know, do you have permits? And can you give us $5,000 an hour to shoot? Everyone's been amazing. So Amsterdam Library is like, yeah, come bring, yeah, anything you want. We're 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 open till two on Tuesday. We don't open till two. So come in before and I'll be here at nine and you can just have the day and you can have the whole place to yourself, basically. Oh, that's Today, awesome. Amazing. She was like amazing. And then we needed an exterior at a general store. And so um, my sister recommended the Vischer Ferry General Store, which is in, uh, it's in, it's gone. I want to say it's in Vischer Ferry, but I don't think that's right. But it's like, you know, it's like 25 minutes from here. Yeah. And those people were amazing. They were lovely. They're like, yes, film here. We, we're we closed on Tuesdays and Mondays. Just come here. And we shot outside and they were amazing. And they, uh, it's been like remarkable. So we got all of that, those shots done. But what I realized was we didn't, um, I'm so used to uh, shooting with a crew and I can get like five to eight pages done a day with a crew, mm -hmm. like a well-organized shoot with a crew. But when I'm the only crew, if the sound guy has a problem, that's me. And if the camera cinematographer has a problem, that's also me. And if I'm acting in the scene and doing all that, that's all me. Yeah. And then if I need to give Michael direction, but like my hands are freezing because it's 28 degrees out, I'm like, it's, it was a lot. So we were getting like two pages done a day and we just started doing the math and we're like, um, we're not going to get this done before there's winter. And we have a, at least almost a half of the film is shot outside. So mm. we're like, and we need to like dig into the ground and stuff. There's a lot. And then it was hunting season and we have all these scenes in the woods and it around, we're like on one acre surrounded by 40 acres and it's like a, 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 a firing range. On the yeah. weekend. And we're like, we can't shoot our horror scene in the woods, and then we in we're not wearing like orange <laughs> in the scene. We're gonna die. So we're like, we're staying. So we are now we are local. We feel like we're local now. We've earned local because we have yeah. dug out the the driveway you see in the picture behind you. We've dug it out <sighs> of this blizzard. So um so that's the story. Oh, and we also, I forgot to mention the most important thing. We, I did a Seed and Spark fundraiser and we, our goal is to raise $15,000 mm -hmm. because, because um, I'm Screen Actors Guild, um, we needed to hire a payroll company in order to pay ourselves out of our money, which is so messed up <laughs> on some level. And there was all, and we wanted, uh, we're we're planning. We're just planning on everything about this film being an incredible success. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to when it gets the trillion dollar Paramount whatever distribution deal. We didn't want to have to backtrack and do all the legal stuff. Yeah, you know? get so it right out of the way. We did it all up front. So we raised fifteen thousand dollars. That way we were, uh, and that paid for equipment and paid for our travel. And it paid for all these things like payroll and insurance and that sort of thing. And we, we actually raised over 22,000. That's awesome. Yeah. We were like the most amazing supporters. And they're, they're this vast community from people that we know and some people we don't know. And people were incredibly generous. And, and um, so it was the whole experience has been like it's kind of overwhelming and we're we were bummed we didn't get to finish but now that we're like in the we're sort of doing all the pre-production that we we kind of just jumped in and started filming mm. in fall because we wanted to because we knew that winter was coming and now we're we taking a breath to like actually like 
storyboard the rest of the film and get all make sure we're getting all the shots listed and make sure uh, we have to do all these like special effects tests and makeup blood tests and makeup tests it gets kind of gruesome so um yeah that's all right awesome. i'll stop babbling for a while no that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's really cool that's really cool and definitely congratulations on raising that money thank you and, <clears throat> you're welcome it's what no, i want to too- no money in the world of movie making right it's but it's a lot of money to me because i'm used to doing things on like no budget because like when we made the short we made it for a thousand dollars and mm-hmm. i needed a dolly track and a crane so i built a dolly track out of inline skate wheels and plywood and pvc pipe and i built a crane out of plumbing pipe and like a mouse pad and like free weights and like that's just how we I like doing stuff like that. Like, I don't know what these people are spending money on. <laughs> so, like, I'm, I'm going to build a crane. I'm going to build a, um, a dolly track this week. We have a nice, I bought a nice gimbal for some steady cam stuff. But, um, mm. yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been eye opening. Like, oh, I, I really miss having a crew. <laughs> <laughs> Who thought this was a good idea? You? <laughs> yeah, I know. What an idiot. Oh, man. That, that's cool, though. And I mean, what you guys are doing, what I think is really cool about it is, like you said, you're your own crew, so you have to wear different hats, of course, but you you have to learn so much about everything. That's one thing I love about indie films. Like, I've never been involved in indie film, but as far as, like, interviewing people and stuff is when people like yourself come on and they're just like, you literally have to do everything. But I think, it, and they always, they're, they always enjoy it and they always love it. They're like, it's a lot of work. It does get tiring and frustrating at times, but the good thing is, you literally know how to do everything. So it's like, say if somebody was trying to get into, you know, I mean, everybody who does films is not going to turn down a fat check. Like, listen, we want you to write, direct this film for us. But what yeah. I'm getting at is if Hollywood were to call damn near anybody for a certain thing, hey, we need you to do this. We need you to, oh, what do you know how to do? Oh, I know how to do everything. <laughs> like, I literally right. know how to do everything because I have, because I'm in the, independent, I can't afford to hire a big crew. So I have to learn how to do everything. And another thing I love about indie is for the, I mean, a lot of it, for the most part, the storytelling, because you have to, I under, cause I understand from watching a ton of horror movies, horror shorts, as far as indie goes, not just regular, but indie goes. And obviously the budget's nowhere near the Hollywood movies, not even close. Right. I mean, then again, horror, I mean, if you look at the eighties horror movies, a lot of them weren't that high budgeted, maybe for the time, but still not like, you know, right. But anyway, like you have to use, it's like, it's pretty much like a, a, an everyday thing. Like, listen, I have $40. I got to make this work for the week. It's like, listen, I have to make this independent film. Like you said, I have a thousand bucks. Let's see what we can do with a thousand dollars to make this film. But what I like about it is it makes you, you challenge yourself for one. It makes you have to be more creative. Like you're saying, you were building this stuff at a PVC pipe and a mouse yeah. pad and stuff like just just little things like that that people would probably overlook and not even really think about it honestly i would overlook it and not even think about it until i started doing this show and i was interviewing people because you really don't you don't know which makes you enjoy it and respect the respect the craft a lot more that what you guys do i think it's awesome yeah thank you i you know i i, I just watched um that new the invisible man how uh, was it it's it's good. I, I I had heard it was good, and I I when it came out, I thought oh, I don't want to see that. And actually, I thought it was pretty. Um, it's 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 compelling, and it it kind of creeped me out in a way that I was surprised by because yeah. and it's it's a big budget movie, but it is super low budget effects for most of it. It's like you know the camera pans, and you don't know why because he's invisible, right? So it's like the it's like the ultimate cheap way to make a movie. Yeah. But I was reading about the filmmakers and they were using they uh something something I read he said something to the effect of you only you only need it to look good it needs to look perfect the shot needs to look perfect like once right mm-hmm. so whatever that means if it means there's a PA in a cupboard with a, like pulling a string so the cupboard closes but you don't you know as long as it looks great who cares how you do it exactly so they also did like a big a bunch of cgi stuff and you know people in green screen suits but you know we are we're michael and i are doing everything 100 percent practical which i have a big passion for because i uh, i love movies like the thing and you know 
80s the, travesty, the travesty of the remake was like why'd you go cgi guys why um which is a whole sad story if you ever read about that but um uh I love all that. And we don't, you know, it's not, it's, this is certainly not a special effects heavy script, but there are some, there are some things that happen. And um, it's been really fun to like dig into that thing that like me in a, as a child in the Walden bookstore, uh, uh, looking at Fangoria magazine and like before I had ever seen the movies and like looking at all the, the worst death shots, mm -hmm. like, how did they do that? How did they do it? Now I'm starting to learn how they did that. It's like you said, the like learning all the things. Yeah. Like, I, my God, I hope I never have to do sound again. <laughs> I, I like, I have such respect. I've always had respect for my crew. Like I've, 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 the one thing I know I'm good at, is surrounding myself with people who know what they're doing more than I do. So like I've had great cinematographers that I've learned from and I'm trying to emulate them. I've had mm -hmm. great sound guys, but the sound people, I don't know what they're doing that's so magical that makes the sound good when the sound is good. And now I've had to learn that and boy, hats off. I can't wait to make a film with a crew. <laughs> a crew again. I was about to say, so this mean next time you're gonna start, you're gonna get like, you know what? I, I'm going to be like the nicest director to the crew next time. Like, thank you for everything every day. And they were like, okay, here's some candy. Just to, whatever you need, whatever you need. Then you're going to get, get that, Greg, that Greg director is weird. He keeps giving us candy. And I know, I know. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you guys. Don't make me do this alone. Um, but it is, it's, it is good to learn all this stuff. I think it's, you know, like, I feel like everyone should have to work in a restaurant before you, before you get to eat in a restaurant. Like, I think everyone should have to do some food service before you're allowed to eat in a restaurant <laughs> so that you know how hard the people that do food service work. Like, I feel like that's a thing. And it's, it's good to know, like, when, when you're on set and, like, something's going wrong and that, that piece of, like, we're wasting time, what's happening, why is this not happening? it calms that that voice in your head because you know that everyone's trying their best yeah right yeah and it's all it's all so difficult um it's all like it's complicated not difficult it's just a, it's a lot it's all these people working towards a similar goal having completely different viewpoints on it mm -hmm. uh, so it's been that's been really good and it's been it's been eye-opening um i love it's been really fun learning the new camera um and sort of making artistic choices with lenses and lighting and, and all that. I haven't done that in a long time because I've had really good cinematographers. So it's been, it's been good to sort of work those muscles again. Um, um, and so, uh, and I love editing. So I'm looking, <laughs> looking forward to someday in the far future when I have all the footage and I can put it, start putting it together. I've, I've tinkered these few past weeks with a, a little bit of the footage so far and, it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. That's awesome. So we'll see. That's see, that's great though. And I like, I can tell, and I like how you have a passion for the, for what you're doing, like for doing the horror movies. I mean, that's my favorite genre. So I'm going to say that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just so cool when you have, again, people like yourself on here, other directors. Well, let's just say across the board, director, actor, all this stuff. I don't even know all the terms, <laughs> but all that yeah, yeah. movie makers. Yeah. It's really cool when you have people that come on here and really have the passion for it and just really like really, really, really love it. And just like, listen, I've been doing these horror movies. I've been watching horror since I was a kid. I always wanted to be in a movie. I wanted to make a movie and now I'm doing it. And I'm just like, that's, that's just so cool. And I like how with technology nowadays, I'm not saying anybody or just about anybody can do it with just your cell phone. I'm not saying it'll be the best movie, but you can do something. You can actually do that if you really wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I just think that that alone is amazing. Cause you, you're going to find within the next few years, we're going to start hearing other names as far as like, I'm not gonna sit here and say they will be like the next West Craven or something, but you're going to start hearing like those names, but from, you know, from a smaller, you know, smaller people going up to that level. <laughs> Which is, I think, it's going to be amazing. When I'll say next five to ten years, you're going to start hearing a lot, a lot of names of just like independent people that are just, yeah. Now they're the big wigs. Now they're the big names, and 
I'm hoping, I'm thinking some will, but I'm really hoping that they will put a light on the independent scene. Yeah. Because it definitely, it definitely, definitely deserves it. And I mean, from what I've seen from a lot of independent horror movies, they deserve it. They deserve to get that budget. They deserve to have that backing and that budget that some of these Hollywood movies have, even if it was half of that budget. And I feel like the movies would be 10 times as better, 10 times as good because they have the budget that they, they have more than enough of the budget that they need because they've worked with a hell of a lot less. Yeah, absolutely. And done a hell of a lot more. So it's like, I would love to see what people can do when they have that budget and the freedom, still the same freedom they have to do what they want as far as the independent scene, but the budget to take it to that level where they're just like, I want to do this in my movie, which I want, I have a question for you. Do, have you ever not done a scene just because you couldn't afford, just because you knew it was, like, was going to be too much budget wise, possibly? No. I don't know how to really describe that. No, no I, you know, I, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've uh, I've shot some stuff for other people and I directed some stuff for other people and I've um, all my stuff I've we it's just a workaround it's like you said I, I feel like um, what's the phrase it's like blah blah sparks ingenuity <laughs> whatever like scarcity sparks ingenuity or something like, like okay we have this much money yeah I it's never it's it's such a uh, it's this is such a naive thing to say, but it has never uh, occurred to me that I couldn't do something because of a budget thing. But I've also been working with such small budgets, right? Yeah. So, so um, but there but there is something uh, I, you know it's what, like what you were saying about the the it's isn't it, it's so exciting when a, a tiny independent film, especially an independent horror film makes it huge like when that um paranormal activity came out is that orin mm -hmm. orin pelly direct i think that's his name i'm not 100 percent sure um or uh anyway he made that for eleven thousand dollars and it was it was it was such a um i like that first one so much he just he very smartly just put his um, producer credit on the, all the rest of them so he didn't have to have creative and then he could just cash that money in yep. but um that's like the dream right you make um, a a really original horror movie for eleven thousand mm -hmm. dollars and then it sells for millions and you get then the rest of your life you get just to make content that you love yeah like, how, how exciting that that is that so if anyone's crazy. listening to this who wants to write me a check for a million dollars i'm happy to help you if you want to write me a check for a million dollars yeah me too I don't know what I can help with movie wise, but I'll, I'll give you some ideas. We'll get to your own you. TV show with it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> My own talk show. It'd be like a there horror you know. podcast on, you know, what was I going to say? Oh, another, and uh, yeah, it's independent is, um, terrifier. Have you seen that one? No, my nephew just, uh, uh, recommended it. Is it good? It's awesome. It's not really a deep story. It's a slasher, but it's like, uh, they use like an old school style. Everything is practical on there. Nice. Practical effects. Like there's a kill in there. You're going to be like, holy shit. That was an awesome ass kill. It's, is it funny? It's, there is I, Stephen King at some point, like in the last 10 years, wrote a thing on how when he sees that it's a CGI effect, whatever it is, if it's a horror or a monster or a creature, mm -hmm. there's something that, um, um he his investment goes backwards like right yeah like because you can you're like well that's i mean that's really well done but it's it's not really happening in the room mm -hmm. it's happening after the room and i feel that all the time even if it's done really well i'm like that must be cgi yep um yeah. and if if you're actually seeing like you know the gunshot hole and the or the arm rip off and it's clearly a practical then you're like okay they these filmmakers figured that out and this is not like not to disparage cgi artists like there's some amazing stuff out there mm -hmm. but my, my, as a as a viewer i'm always more interested in visual i love all those 80s like the air black like um american werewolf in london with the like air bladders under the skin altered states like all that stuff yeah like the stuart gordon movies with like reanimator and 
and uh, uh, from beyond, like all that stuff is amazing. I would I would love the budget to be able to make like a pure AD style monster movie. Oh, that would be amazing. Like I'd... big budget to make a big practical special effects disaster. I'd love it. I just watched a fun slasher last night. Now that you're talking about because we're talking about the 80s and practical effects. It's called um, Intruder. It's from. Oh, yeah. I've never seen that. Is It's good. It's oh yeah, I love it. Like it's from '89. Yeah, I'm not gonna give it away. I'll just tell you, it's all taking place in a grocery store. That see, that's great. I love that. One, and it's it's a fun, it's so '80s. Like when you see it, you're gonna be like, oh, so '80s. It's gonna make you hungry. So I'll say, have a bag of chips or a snack with you because it's in a grocery <laughs> store. But it's like the kills in there, and you're just like, oh my goodness! If you've ever worked retail. And you yeah, see, yeah. you're gonna appreciate it a lot more. And I don't mean yeah. that like a sinister way, people, so don't don't come at me. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean that just in general. Like horror fans get what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. But um that's like like that movie I highly recommend. And it's on it's on two have you ever heard heard of the app Tubi? T U B I oh, sure. yeah, yeah, sure, sure. It's yeah. on there, which people it's a free app, so definitely go it's free and it's a legitimate free app. You have a couple ads here and there, which who cares? But it's such an awesome movie and the funny thing about that. the funny thing about that movie right i have a friend named um matt this guy like a freaking movie encyclopedia i swear to you <laughs> every time i'll post in my horror group about uh watching a certain horror movie if he hasn't seen the post i'll tag him or i'll text him or i'll, I'll even text him. i'll even i'll even be that person like yo back you gotta see it intruder oh i seen it i love that movie I have it on blu-ray or dvd ah, what the hell what like, like earlier today, for example, I was watching this movie called uh, Demon Wind, and I only watched that because I seen it. Oh, I have seen Demon Wind. Yes, I seen that like as a pop up on Tubi last night. Yeah. For I forgot what I was watching Tubi before yesterday. What? Oh, for Intruder. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that movie popped up, and so I watched it today, and I tagged my friend Matt. I was like, Matt, have you ever seen this? He's like, I love it. It's like a what did he say? It's like a um. <laughs> That's a, a good ripoff version of oh man night of the living dead i want to say yeah yeah but he was have like you, i love that film have you ever um my friend greg benson hosts a show on twitch um or uh, i think it's on he may have just switched to youtube but it's um uh bad movies live mm -mm. oh it's great it's great and it's kind of like Mystery Science Theater 3000, he gets a guest on and they watch a movie together and comment and they like, take breaks and take drinks and it's really wow. fun. And uh, he's a friend of mine. I had done a little thing with a work uh, sketch stuff with him in LA and we were talking at a party and he had never done horror movies on Bad Movies Live. I'm like, what? Yes. You have to have me on. So we, um, I've been on, I think I've been on four times. That's awesome. And, it's really fun. I'm going to be on at the end of February. Um, we're going to watch Basket Case from the 80s. Have you ever seen Basket Case? Yes. yes. I, haven't, I haven't seen it since the 80s. Thank you very much. So I'm excited about that one. Um, so we've watched fun. like Sleepaway Camp. Um, Felicia Rose. Uh, something, uh, uh, some witch, terrible witch thing. Um, <laughs> I want to watch Chopping Mall on there. I have never seen Chopping Mall. And I've been oh, to watch it. Chopping Malls classic terrible and, classic beautiful see, i like what you just said there because that brings me to my next thing first of all i want to be connected with your friend because i'd love to do that with him or have him on my show oh I'll, yeah yeah yeah. i'd also love to review a movie with you as well but i love what you just said about the terrible movies and the bad movies the thing about bad horror movies is horror fans will go flock to watch those i yeah. still have no idea why we do this to ourselves but, well because i feel here it is we go there to see if the movie is as bad as your friend or whoever says it is. Like, hey, this is the worst horror movie I've ever seen in my life. And you go watch it, and you're just like, that actually wasn't that bad. And on the opposite end of it, someone will watch this movie. Oh, it's the scariest movie I've ever seen, or it's the, you know, it's the best horror movie I've ever seen. I take forever to watch those movies. <laughs> like, yeah, because it's never the scariest movie you've ever seen. Or the best. And I mean, <laughs> granted, there is, there is a lot that were really good. Like, for ex I'll give you a great example. Train to Busan. Ah, love Train of Busan. Awesome movie, right? But because of the social media hype and because I just 
was an idiot and didn't want to read subtitles, which I'm switching that all across the board, not just horror, but just in general. I didn't watch that movie for like a year or two. So yeah. I finally watch it. And my two, it was my brother, Henry, and my friend, Matt, was like, you got to watch this movie. So the asshole that I am, I tagged him in a post. I was like, you guys, I don't know if you've ever seen this movie before, but you guys have to watch Train to Busan. <laughs> yes. I just watched that again like a month ago. I, I watched it that one time. I think, no, I watched it twice. Actually, I watched it twice in one day because what I'll do sometimes is I'll have the movie playing like over on my other, my screen over here on mute and just kind of watch, vi- watching it as, yeah. you know, reviewing it with people. And I think, I, I think I did it like that. I might even watch it. Yeah. I know I watched it twice, maybe even two and a half times, but such a great film. And it's one of those films to where, like, I like films where you're watching a film and, uh, wow. That's obvious. I mean, I meant to say with subtitles, but you could like you could ignore the subtitles almost and still the story's shown so well, you can just you know the emotion. Yeah. You almost know what they're saying. Even though you don't know the language, you almost know what they're saying because it's like yeah. I would say in this situation. That's how Train to Busan was. That mo- that script is so good because he they drop you ju- in between all the horror, which is done so beautifully. Like it's like fast and scary. Mm -hmm. but it um it's filmed beautifully but he gives you he just drops in like enough story that you care about the primary yes characters enough like you care you want that father and daughter to make it you you get that that business guy is going to be the evil one like the jerk yeah Uh, and like all the like the cheerleader or the sports guy (laughs) like all the all the characters um, that you, he gives you just enough that you actually are invested in it, which I think is genius writing. Like you want the thing about bad horror movies, which Train to Busan is not a bad horror movie, mm. but like we just want it. We want like fun. Like sometimes I love like a campy, bad, so bad it's good horror movie. I I live for that. I mm-hmm. I can watch an endless supply of that Same because. Here. Sometimes, sometimes they're surprised. Sometimes you'll be like, turn one on, and then like half an hour, and you're like, this is actually good, good. Like it's actually, yeah, it's like surprise good. Um, and I, I also avoid the ones that are hype. Get all the hype because it never like when it follows. And what was the other one? I think Hereditary came out. I didn't see them for the longest time. Because I knew, because everyone was like, this is one of the top 10 scariest movies of all time. Mm. And I'm like, I'm, I know that I'm not going to agree with that. I like both those movies. And I saw, just saw Hereditary again, and I think it's even better a second time. But like, I'm like, I'm, I'm not super scared. Like, I, I was like, okay. yeah, I'm not like, it's not my top 10 scariest movies. No, I, I hear you there. And I just, I get it, though. I mean, it, it's smart. Of course, the people that are marketing the movie, they're going to say that about it. They're going to have sure. the fake theater screams that every horror movie has. The scariest movie. Oh, with the, with the, like the like uh, night light, the like uh, infrared where they're yeah. like, yeah. I, Actual I, I, I'll, I'll put it to you like this. I'll hype those movies up. I'll lie and say they're the scariest movies I've ever seen. If you guys get me in that crowd to watch the movie and just yelling on screen with everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find me up. But it, it's funny because it's almost... I like I, I want to start paying more attention. I know I probably won't because I probably forget. But it, it would be funny if you like say you go through these these things where they're showing you, like scariest movie alive and they show the crowd reaction. If it's the same people every single time for every single movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's that same clip. Yeah, and of, just, like every, green people. Yep, with a different sound in the background. That's all. Yeah. That's all it is. I want to be one of those people. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Sometimes in LA, you'll get like a. Um, like with SAG, you get like a, a pre-screening pass. That's awesome. And I never get them to the horror movies. I'm like, where? Well, who's getting these? I'm like, you're give them to me. I want to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I wish. I'm like, hey, Aaron, we need you to watch this horror movie. Let us know what you think about it. You sure? You want to know my honest opinion? Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If if you really want my honest opinion, yeah, yeah, they, you know, I I love, but I love like your recommend. I've written, I've written Jed and and uh, what was it, Intruder, Jed and my, Intruder, yeah, and, uh, and Terrifier, and yeah, Jed no Intruder, and Terrifier, because it's the word of mouth. Like I want to hear it from you. I don't want to read it 
that it's yeah, good. That there you go. Like, that I'm with like, you on that. And I mean, yeah, I have like certain friends who I'm like, okay, have you seen this one? Uh, I should. Pa- okay, I'll wait on that one. I'll go to that one. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Because I like the I like Intruder sounds good for me. I like a, a story that's super. Um, I like a wide range of horror movies, but I like when sort of the rules of the horror movie are contained in a, like, I like a, the idea of a whole horror movie taking place in a grocery store. Like that, awesome. that, that's like a, cause it's like a problem that the filmmakers have to solve. Mm-hmm. Like, why can't they leave or why don't they leave or how come they can't leave? And, and uh, I like that idea. And I, you know, um, if this, uh, if I can bring it back to my own film remission, um, one of the reasons we want to, when I started writing it, I realized like it's a lot of it is about um, like it, we're setting it in March of 2020 or in March, April, 2020. So it's like, it's like uh, feeling isolated, uh, fear of the intruder. It's all the, co- it's all the stuff that happens for the quarantine. It's like, and that was sort of um, by accident. It was like a, it was like themes that, helped us raise money because we're like this is exactly the time when everyone's feeling these things like you don't want a person to come in your house Mm -hmm. it's that like stay stay locked in your house and uh, um at one point the character has to go into town because he lost his he lost his phone charger and it's his only um link to the other side but then his his car keys are gone have been taken away so he has to walk and it's 14 miles walk. So I needed to make it. So it's not, I'm like, cause otherwise, why didn't he just go to a neighbor's? Like, why isn't he just yeah walk into town and go to a Burger King and like tell the manager he needs to use the cell phone. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. gotta have a reason he can't. And I like the idea that you're just stuck somewhere. I love yeah. it. No, it, it makes sense. Cause like, like you just said, it would be too easy if he can get away yeah. in his car to go get his charger or if you could walk to a neighbor's house and get the charger or whatever the case may be. And, and that, that that's one thing I do like about horror. And I, a thing I find hilarious about horror is, uh, which I just mentioned this the other night, is um, Friday the 13th, for example. Mm-hmm. Jason drowns as a child. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By part two, he's, da- he's pretty much grown. And yeah. We never question as horror fans. We don't even question that about yeah. how that doesn't make sense. But we'll, we'll question, like, say, if um, we'll question why somebody ran up in a room, like, you know, for example, Friday the Thirteenth again, people run up the stairs and hide in like a closet or something. I'm like, why the hell would you do that? When you, you were right by the front door, <laughs> he was at the back door, and you run upstairs. Like, why? Yeah, That's what we'll question, but we don't question that. We don't question how Michael Myers is still alive. But yeah, and something supernatural. Yeah. Like, Covers a lot of it. Uh, I read. Uh, I was. Uh, we. I. Um. I spent part of my quarantine. I spent finally watching all of the Friday the Thirteenth movies, one after another. Because mm-hmm. I hadn't seen all of. I think I hadn't seen six at all. Oh really? With C.J. Graham? Uh, yeah. And I hadn't seen all of <laughs> Jason Takes Manhattan, uh. which is that's a rough. That's a, that's so boring. It gets so boring. <laughs> it's like, come on, come on. Let's it's Jason takes a ferry ride down a river. Most of the movie. And then finally he gets to Manhattan. Come on, mm-hmm. come on filmmakers. Let's let's kill, kill some more. I want to see gangs in New York being killed by Jason. That would have been awesome. Yeah. And um, the, the, the funny thing is that's like my favorite, like Jason's my favorite slasher. And that movie's on the lower end of my like. I don't hate any of the Friday the Thirteenth movies. I like them all at the very least. But um, it is fun. That's like one part. I'll say Jason Takes Manhattan is definitely one of those ones where people either. It's just, <laughs> it is what it is. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, there's uh, uh, the I was you know what I was surprised by is um, four is really good. Oh, four. I was didn't. Re- I didn't remember that from like when i saw it originally but watching it again I'm like it really holds up and three is really fun three i think is like the most fun like sequel but i think yeah. two is like a solid horror movie i like the pillow with the eye the pillowcase yeah. i think it's super scary i think it's scarier than the mask i know the mask is iconic 
the hockey mask. Oh, I love it. But that like one eyed pillowcase. Come on, that's that's terrifying. If someone showed up in a hockey mask, you'd be like, oh, are you playing hockey? But if someone showed up with a pillow case with one eye cut out, you're like, I'm about to get disemboweled. See, now for me, being <laughs> black, you already know I'm going. Is this a clan member? Did he forget to cut the other eye? <laughs> Did he forget to cut oh. the other eye? It's not a pointy pillowcase, but I see what you mean. I see what you mean. It was practically the same color. <laughs> yes. Our- I think it was supposed to be like a burlap sack, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I could see that, though, as far as the, the pillowcase thing being more scary than the hockey mask. But the hockey mask is just so cool. And I can't like it. Speaking of Jason Six Manhattan again, it, the scene that had me laughing is when Jason gets off the boat. And, you know, after he climbs up the ladder or whatever, and he sees the big sign with the hockey mask. The hockey like, team, yes. And that just, is, that's the best moment in the movie, actually. And he turns you know, his head to the side. And oh. that, <laughs> that was actually played by uh, Kane Hodder, my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Played in 7, 8, 9, and Jason X. Yeah. Which, I mean, my favorite one was 7. That had the best look, Jason. It was It was awesome. But that's uh, a psychic girl, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which I actually got to be on a. <laughs> I tell this story too, which is funny. I actually got to be on a. It was her. It was the doctor from that movie, Bad News Cruise, and it was the guy in the jean jacket. I don't. I I just refer to him as Jean Jacket. I don't remember his name. Yeah, yeah. I was on a panel with them, which was up. I mean, watching these movies from my childhood, I never thought yeah. I'd be. I didn't even know about cons for, you know, years. And then I finally know about them. Then it's like, you go to these cons, you do this, and then you get to be on a panel. I was like, what? Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and amazing. I was telling my, uh, I was telling my brother about it. And I was like, yo, I said, if Kane Hodder was there, I'd probably passed out on stage. <laughs> was up there. Cause I've met him one time. Such a nice guy. And I've heard uh, that. So, yeah. Really nice. Well, I've never had a bad experience with, the horror community as far as meeting the celebrities there was two that rubbed me the wrong way it was um from scream skeech and uh matthew lillard oh really a little like so we were walking down the hall and my brother it was either my brother or one of my friends was just like you know hey how's it going talking to them and they were like you know if you want to talk to us come to our table and pay for our autograph pretty much i was just like Uh. and that just but I do hear and I have seen online a lot, like videos and hear from a lot of people that go to cons that they're very great with children, which I think that's is awesome. But I'm just, I mean, th- that's cool and all, but I'm a grown ass man. You're like, you, you can, <laughs> <laughs> you can be a lot nicer than that. And I like, I was never, it's not because of this, but I was never like a big fan of the Scream franchise. I think it was okay. To me, it's okay at best. I respect what it did for horror, especially yeah. in that time. I greatly respect for what it did for the horror commute, you know, for horror in general in that time. But I honestly think it's one of the most overrated horror movies out. That my wow. that's my opinion. Like I'm just, I don't know. I just wasn't. It, I thought scary movie was better, and it was a spoof of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, scary wow. movie was better. And that's um, not, again, that's not even that's it's just it's one of those things I'll watch it. Like I know part five is coming out what next year. I'll watch it. I may even go through one through five because I just do that with franchises. But like if if Scream never existed, like if Scream, you know how people do those social media things, what movie would you take away or whatever? If Scream's there, that's it. I'm like Scream. <laughs> just Wow. It's I don't know. I like the first Scream a lot. I you know uh, the um i i think i love wes craven and i i love yeah. i think he's so smart and i like i love what um wes craven's new nightmare i gotta see i gotta watch that again oh my god where he has the scene with heather seen. langenkamp mm-hmm. and they're it's like meta in a way that was before its time and and he's they're reading they're talking to each other and then they look at the computer screen and he, he has just written the scene that they're talking that they're speaking ah, that's awesome Come yeah on. my brother actually likes that one a lot too i believe that's what's, your, what's, what's your all-time favorite horror movie if you have one horror movie to choose oh that's so tough i know it's a terrible question 
That's a, it is. And the, it's funny because I just got asked this question earlier today, and I always give the generic answer. I really, I like, I honestly don't have one. But, um, or top three. This is tough. I have one. I'm going to tell you mine. I want to hear yours. All right. My top, my favorite movie of all time, and I've seen it literally over 300 times, is the original Nightmare on Elm Street. I respect that. That's a really good one. It's good because I saw it as a kid when it was new and it scared the before Freddy Krueger like became like a stand up comic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that first movie, he's really scary in that movie. And that movie scared the crap out of me. And then we started like watching it in high school and college and then in grad school, like on VHS and then got DVDs. And then it's just been like always in my life. And talk, um, uh, I went to a screening and Ronnie Blakely, who plays the mom, was at it. Oh, and I met her. And now we're Facebook friends. That's, awesome. that's all I wanted out of my life is that I am Facebook friends with Ronnie Blakely, the mother see, from right around Elm Street. And, like I can, I can recite the whole thing. That see now that that's, that's dedication right there. I'll, I'll just throw, I'll see Friday the 13th, that part seven, like, wow. Part seven. That's my favorite. That's my favorite one of the franchise. And I'll just say that that's my favorite movie. But I, again, it, like those movies I've been, been watching since I was a child. And I remember USA network Friday the 13th, yeah. It would be playing the whole weekend, and that was, they showed like part three a lot. They showed part five a lot, part four, part six. You got one and two here and there. Sometimes you have the marathon of all of them. Sometimes it depends on how they felt. Sometimes they'll do a marathon and they'll skip one, and you're like, "Can, can you not skip one?" Yeah, but I, I need the story to continue, please. Exactly. Not skip Even though um, a lot of the horror movie franchises, the stories jump around, but still, yeah, yeah. it's like I need to see every single one of them in order. And yeah, have, you like, watched, have you watched Camp? Uh, what's it? Uh, do you have Shutter? Yes. Uh, uh, was it Crystal Camp Crystal Memories or something? It's a. It's like a. So like I know what you're talking about. Five hour I, documentary that is made for you. Yes, I watched. I believe my wife and I watched like half of it. Didn't finish it. Don't remember why. We also another one. Another good documentary since you mentioned that with Friday the Thirteenth is um, Kane Hodder's To Hell and Back. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, yeah. He's I'm not an emotional trip. person at all. <laughs> <laughs> and like, where I'm, so I'm, lay, I'm laying down in bed watching with the with my wife, and I had already read his book, so I knew a lot. I knew a lot was going to happen in the documentary, but I was laying down watching it with my wife, and at a certain part, she's getting teary eyed. Yeah, you, know, you get like that that feeling in your yeah, throat. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I pushed it back down. Though. I was like, I can't just start crying right here watching this damn movie. But oh my god. Just like, not even because he's one of, he's my favorite, he is my favorite horror icon, but, you know, actor, not just because of that, you know, as far as him portraying Jason, but just because of, like, his story and, like, what he overcame and the type of person that he is from it. Like, he's still a really nice guy after all the stuff he's been through, but I'm just like, that's just amazing. And then to see, you know, again, what he overcame, what he accomplished, and what he does, what he does for us fans. So, it's, I'm just like, this is just great. And that's how awesome. you said, how you mentioned, um, Sleepaway Camp a little while ago. You ever meet Felissa Rose? I have not met her, but we are Facebook friends because we have a mutual friend in New York because she grew up on Long Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend Jen Johnson said, you have to meet my friend Felissa Rose. Have you ever seen Sleepaway Camp? And I hadn't at the time. And then I finally watched it and I'm like, oh my God. It's like, I love Sleepaway Camp. It's one of my, that's one of my favorite movies because it's, it is hilarious and horrible and funny and it's well written and it's yeah. creepy and it's 80s camp perfection and like one of the best twists in horror in movie, horror movies amazing don't say it in case anyone hasn't heard oh no I, it, I, 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 here's what i'll say two things one felissa rose you need to add me on facebook greg i hope you can make that happen for me okay. that's my okay. dream just like your dream was to have um what was her name again <laughs> Ronnie Blakely, yes. Ronnie Blakely, that's that's my Ronnie Blakely. <laughs> oh my but, um, no, I met I've met her a few times. She's sweet, sweet person, really. Yeah, that's nice. what I've heard she's super nice. Like she's she's one of those people to where if you go to like say you're at the con and there's nobody at her table or there's not many people in line, she'll just sit there talking to you. So that's nice, great. call you over and all that stuff. Um, 
Amanda Wiss, another really, really nice person. I got to meet her a couple times. And I met, uh, what's his name? Oh, Kincaid, Friday, or not, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. What's his real name? Oh, uh, 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 the big guy. Ken Sagos. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was. I love, our, I love Part 3. It's, uh, it's a fun one. I like so Part 3 a lot, fun. too. I actually, I, I'm going to, I don't know when, but I'm eventually going to be doing a countdown for those movies, like reviewing each one of them through the franchise and then doing a, like a countdown. I'm not sure because I have to go through them again because I don't know the franchise as well as I do Friday the 13th, but I'm not sure which one is my favorite out of one, two, and three. I feel like those three are the best ones. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, they stuck with me the most. And like one inch, I think part two was like the last one that was actually scary. Yeah. Although, have you seen like, have you seen the documentaries about part two? I have not, but I've heard about them and it, they're incredible. Yeah, it's, it's it is the gayest horror movie that has ever been. And I remember watching it when it came out and thinking, huh, well, the, there's something going on in this movie. And I can't, I can't quite figure it out. But I love part two. Yeah. And I remember at the when I first saw it, I, I was bummed that like Nancy wasn't in it. Mm -hmm. Just her journal. But like, which was made me so happy when part three came out. But um, part two, I I saw it in the movie theater in LA, probably like I don't know, like seven, five or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And the filmmakers uh, who made the documentary came out for it, and it was really great to like talk to them. We because we watched the documentary and the film. Awesome, awesome. See, I, like I love part like three, and I love. Uh, Wes Craven's new nightmare. What what's the like four and five get a little like a little weird. <laughs> uh, it's like the baby. And then there's like, there's that one. Is it five that has the like karate scene, but they ran out of money. You were talking about running out of money. They yeah. ran out of money. So Freddie's invisible. So he's just this guy like doing this. You know what I mean? The budget, <laughs> the budget. Yeah. Come on, like that I don't think is a, a good um, example of uh, trying to solve a problem. With no budget. <laughs> like I think as we were talking before, yeah. like, I feel like there's maybe rewrite the scene, but yeah. not that Freddy's invisible. Maybe he's, I don't know. But, Some, um, yeah. <laughs> but with, um, with I'm, and then I, met, I also got to meet uh, Mark Patton from part two, which real nice guy. And he actually oh, had... Wow. The the glove, like the not a replica, but the glove. That oh thing is a lot heavier than you think it is. It's heavier than you think it is. And just a really, really nice guy. Like my brother got his autograph. We were talking to him, took a picture with all of us, like with his with the glove on us, like that or something. Took a picture with yeah. just, that's amazing. It's one of those things. If you if for those of you who have never been to a horror convention, now if you're I've never fan, been. I've never been. Oh my gosh. I know. Well, once they open back up, <laughs> you have I'm telling you go to one, you will have the time of your life. Like Ken Sagos, for example. What happened? I went there. For, actually, here's a funny thing with this. This guy I can tell you about uh <laughs> bring mention my brother Henry again. So I don't it, it might have been I don't remember what year it was. It was a couple of years ago though. And he, him, his wife, and my nephews, they moved out to Colorado, where his wife is from, a couple of years ago. The same year they moved out, right? So I think they moved out there, say, let's just, I don't remember what month, but say they moved out there in February or March. Uh -huh. April is when uh, Robert England came to Albany. And mind you, Friday or Nightmare on Elm Street is his favorite slasher of all time. So, of course, Freddy's his favorite. Sure. And, <laughs> and I'm laughing because I think it's funny. But his, we like, you know, we, my wife and I would go over there and hang out with them like every weekend just because we know they're moving in the next couple of months. So we're going to hang out as much as we can. And when he found out about that, she was like, You should have seen Henry, Aaron. She was like, He was like a child. Like when he's getting his luck, <laughs> when he was getting his luck ready for work, he's just slamming things. <laughs> he was pissed. And this went on for like a week or two, just slamming things, just bad as hell. But uh, with that, the cool thing the cool thing about that though was he left he left a glove because he wanted to get the glove signed so he left a glove 
we got a sign for him. My well, my wife got a sign for him, and then she um made like a shadow box for him with all the stuff that like oh like, cool put yeah a picture in there for him that got signed the glove and some she did something else I I don't remember what it's stuff I can't do I would have just mm-hmm. sent glove back in a box like yo you you here's the shadow box you figure out how you want it to go in here yeah yeah that's <laughs> but, amazing um, so we did we got that and then the following con was actually. I don't know if it was my first year or second year at the con with the podcast, but might have been my first year. Anyway, that's where I met Amanda Wiss for the second time because she was at the previous con. That's where I met yeah. Ken Sagos for the first time. And with him, so he go to his table, get his autograph, and got a got the script signed for my brother. And my wife was just like, hey, she was like, my brother, she told him the story about how, you know, my brother moved out to Colorado. So obviously he couldn't make it to this con. She's like, is there any way you can call? And he, and he was working this day too, which was even funnier. My brother was working this day. She was like, is there any way you can call like on his lunch break or one of his breaks or whatever? Because I was going to call him on my break just to let him know. Or on his breaks, <clears throat> he would text me like, yo, I, you know, call me now and let me know what's going on. Da, da, da. And he was like, yeah, of course. So I texted him. I was like, yo, you're on break. And he was like, yeah. And I called him. I didn't even, I didn't, I just handed Ken Seikos the phone and he was talking to him. He talked to him for like a good 10, 15 minutes. Wow. And that whole That's weekend, great. that whole weekend, what was fun and funny was Ken, would, I'd walk past, hey, Aaron, come over here. Come hang out with me for a little bit. Come on, come. And me and him would be going back and forth, having people just cracking up, just laughing. Wow. So at one point I was talking to him. I was like, I would be, I would love, I'd be honored to get you on my podcast one day. And he, I had explained to him what it was. I was like, basically, it's like, it's like, talk radio but better (laughs) (laughs) and he was like yeah he was like of course he was like um he's like you have your stuff here now i was like yeah i was like i'm right over he's like come back in about 10 minutes came back 10 minutes he's like he's like i can give you about 20 minutes half hour of my time and he definitely did and i am proud to say i bought ken sago some fried chicken and he enjoyed it nice like that was the icing on the cake right there between that oh and um with Amanda Wiss, one thing I forgot to tell you, mention with this is she, so at the first con that I met her, I was talking to her, talking to her and was taking her, she did a video for me that said, uh, I think it was Welcome to Horror Research 30. I have to find it. And then I told them, she was like, can you do me a favor now? Tell people to watch the id. What, uh, the id, it's the, and then ID, a mm-hmm. movie that she's in, she stars in really good movie oh all right i write down i, I might have messed up with the spelling or whatever it's, it's the i mean the because it, it's called her name is meredith in the movie so they uh-huh. took those letters out excellent movie so but anyway she's like you know can you tell them to watch this movie and i said yeah <laughs> so like watch this movie the id or freddie will get you and they screen the camera over to the rapper for like two seconds They're like hey you can't do that so i put it back <laughs> ah but um i kept it though but uh the cool thing about that though was i was like you know what i said um when when we have time because again this is my brother moved, I said, we're going to review this movie for you and she's like i would love that so I, we met her again in october my wife and i met her again in october and she actually remembered us after we talked to her for a little bit and i was like my brother me and my, my brother and i said we're definitely gonna review this movie i said well i just haven't got the time yet and she was like well can you do me a f-? she's like i don't know what happened was that friday night my wife and I watched it while we were, you know, out at the con. We watched it that night at the hotel room, and I told her the next day we watched it and how much we enjoyed it. And I told her about, you know, the podcast and all this stuff. She wrote, a, she gave me her personal email to send her that, <laughs> that. And I was just like, for some people, I'm mean, like, oh, that's not that big. But for little things like that, it's just, it just means the world to me. Like, as a horror fan, especially, I'm like, you have these icons. Like these people are icons to me. Yeah. I know you have your your big name Hollywood movie stars, but. I'm, I'd rather meet the horror realm any day because yeah. it's just, I'm not saying that they're nicer, more down to earth. They might be, but it's just, that's just my genre of movie. And I'm just like, these guys are like heroes to me. Like, I don't look at Freddie. I'm like, I want them to kill the people in the movies. <laughs> I want yeah, yeah, yeah. To, be the, to be victorious at the end of the movie. <laughs> and it's just, it's just one of those experiences though. I really feel like, I know for a fact, just from talking to you with these few minutes, one and two, you being a huge horror fan, yeah, you would have such an amazing time there. I, and I, I, I would even say once you get your film out 
And are you guys going to be going on DVD or Blu-ray? Uh, yes. Let's say yes. We're going. Uh, yes. But it's, let's speak it into existence. Yeah. So, so big film festivals, distribution deal. Yes. Streaming, DVD, Blu-rays, Oscars. All that great stuff. You have to speak it into existence. And then, and then, then I'll come back on and we can laugh about See? how I struggled to make the film. That's what I like about that. When Thank he pulls you. up, he's going to come go. back. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, what I was going to say is like when you when you uh, when you guys do get your film done and with the DVD distribution and all that, if you guys get a few DVDs to bring to a con with you to sell, sign, you have a table there. And it's just it's one of those experiences. I mean, go as a fan first, I'd say, and then maybe go get a yeah. table. Do both. Either way, you're going to have an amazing time. I promise that you're going to have like 2022 is we're going to see the cons come back. Do you think they're going to happen this year? I, well, I'm going to say this. There's one that's supposed to be happening in September in New Jersey. I'm knocking on my wooden chair. And I'm knocking on my... What is this? It's my TV tray. Supposedly made of wood. <laughs> <laughs> but they're supposed to... Be, yeah, there's... And there's a few... I know there's a few out on the West Coast, or they're talking about it at least, but there's one... I don't remember what the con's called in New Jersey. I think like New Jersey horror kind or whatever. And I'm going as long if, if put it, if that con is going to be going on, I'm going to that for that three day wow. weekend, I'm bringing my podcast and I'm going to have a great time and I'm going to go there with some money. I'm going to leave with a lot less money. <laughs> <I'll say> that. <laughs> That's another, that is another serious thing though. I'll say is here's my advice to you as well. <laughs> when you go to a con, obviously save money like you would for anything else but then save more because yeah. if you're a i'm not sure if you're a collector or not but i'm sure if you've seen something cool as shit like you're like i have to get this yeah yeah, yeah. wow get it. buy it because i'm still kicking myself there's oh. a friday the 13th <laughs> figure pamela Voorhees in a box this big oh. i believe they wanted like 90 bucks for it what did I do? I'll be back. I'll come back around, looking around, looking around, looking around, and they're spending all my damn money. And I'm just like, regret, regret, yeah. because that same figure. I don't. For one, I don't remember which figure it was. Like I know it if I see it. I'll say like a year later, six months to a year later, I'm seeing it on not theirs, but just people selling them for like three hundred up. I'm like, son of a, damn it. Yep. <laughs> so from then on, the thing is, if I got that, I wouldn't want to sell it. Like oh, I might sell it in like years. I want it, right? Yes, exactly. My, my sister-in-law collects a lot of uh, movie and TV memorabilia, and she has some really weird stuff. Have you ever seen um, The Hunger? Mm -mm. Oh, that's one of my ten favorite horror movies. It's not like a <clears throat> horror movie. It's more. Yeah. It's like vampire and David Bowie and Catherine okay. Deneuve, Susan Sarandon. It's awesome. It's got some of the best editing that has ever been on film. It's beautiful. Tony, um, Tony uh, Scott directed it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I think. Anyway, so good. And there's a scene early on. Susan Sarandon is like a scientist who studies aging diseases. And there's a there's a a monkey that ages really quickly, and it's kind of claymation-y in yeah. in the camera because they were like speeding through the film. My sister in law has that monkey. That's awesome. Just in, her, in her living room, <laughs> just in a cabinet. And every time I go over, I think, oh, I want that monkey. I wouldn't sell that monkey. She's always like, it will be worth something someday. I'm like, she's not going to sell that thing. Mm -mm. She loves the hunger. No, there's like, I, I have a decent sized collection and nothing is for sale. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, obviously, if, if I had to, that's different, but nothing is for sale. On that, okay, here's my here's my two stipulations. I'm lying because I also have two muscle cars that I say they're not for sale either. <laughs> it's here's my two. It's one if I absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent. There's no other option. I have to, of course. And two is if you give me a ridiculous price, which is going to be high. Oh well, sure, everything's I, for sale for the price. Yeah, I mean nuts like stuff that this like hey Aaron, you only paid two dollars for this. Like I don't care. I want a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Well, then Excellent. you're not getting it. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, I would love to go to a con, so maybe I'll see you at one. Hopefully, hopefully. The I'm telling you, it's the most. It, they're just so fun. They they really are, and it's one of those atmospheres to where. Have you have you ever been to like a Comic Con convention? 
Never. I've been to a lot of film festivals, though, which, you know, it's a lot of this like like minded people coming together. OK, like, so you know, a bunch of films and yeah, I've been to horror film festivals and and uh, might be a, I, one of my favorite things to like be in a bunch of filmmakers and fans talking about movie making. It's mm-hmm. like my favorite. I mean, you get that with the cons, too, because honestly, I know the kind that I would frequently go to they have a film fest which i just found out about this freaking in 2019 and missed it again because i was on panels or stuff but they'll have like a little film fest with them but it was called a uh, scaricon oh yeah i've heard of that fun that was actually where i met, met Phil- felissa rose plenty of times oh my god oh, wow such a yeah, nice she, she is on that circuit she's she really is from she's still working she's still working on in films she does a lot of indie films too yeah absolutely and but yeah but what i was getting at those with these cons it's just probably similar to the film film fest vibe to where you get a lot of people that are just they're there for that reason as far as they love horror i was asking you about comic-con because a lot of times at comic-con it's i'm not going to say everybody but it's one of those things to where like if you have kids maybe your kids want to go there you maybe not want to go but you're like i'm here to support my child or my significant other or some friends and then of course there's that group that just everybody wants to be there but with the horror convention Everybody that's there from the children, well, I mean, they have no choice to the adults to like from like babies to like 90 year olds want to be at these cons. You'll see them there. Yeah. But I think it's because horror, I mean, I guess you could say any genre movie goes back far, but horror goes back so far and evolved so much to where it's just like, and you can go in any direction with horror. You could do a comedy yeah. horror, you could do a romantic horror, you can do a horror with a killer turkey, which they did. Thanks, Killing oh, yeah. the movie. And you you can't be wrong. Like there's gonna be fans of it. You can't do. I'll yeah. use this example because I said thanks killing with the killer turkey. Marvel and DC couldn't do super turkey or super chicken. And have a bunch of people going to watch. Nobody's gonna want to see that. <laughs> right. But right. horror fans. Yeah. Will <laughs> will flock to go see. Do you see? Uh, is it called Black Sheep? New Zealand zombie sheep. No, I have. I think I. I believe I've seen that on facebook i just have not watched it yet as a matter of fact you know what it's really fun you could have have an animal attacks film festival like a screening night where all the animals turn evil that's awesome i have i think that's on i have this a horror wheel that i um i started doing for like when i do my movie review shows at the end of the episode or at some point in the episode we'll spin the wheel whatever movie land that's the movie we're going to review next i think it is on that wheel but what I will, what I would like you to do, if you wouldn't mind, is when you get a chance, no rush, send me five horror movies. I would say five that are easy to find too. But anyways, five horror movies, three good, two just why the hell did I watch this type? <laughs> like too bad, okay. and just email them to me. And wh- whenever you get a chance to, and I'll add those to the wheel. And if it's obviously if it's already on there, I'll let you know, and then just you know. <laughs> Yeah. But just because it's, it just makes it makes movie reviewing so much easier for me <laughs> because yeah. I don't have to, the way I would, the way I used to do my show was I would have the guests come on and let them choose the movie, and then at times it would get kind of repetitive, which I don't mind to an extent because I don't I don't care if I review the same movie. I did Thanksgiving three times on this show, <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those things I don't care if it gets repetitive, but I don't want it to get too repetitive. Like if it's a couple years later, a year or two later, okay, let's do it again. But um, yeah, with the wheel. There's no thinking involved. You come, me and my my co-host will review these movies, and whoever wants to be a guest can just come on with us and <laughs> review the movie with us. That's great. But it's just it's so fun. We do, and I do it for my other show. It's called um, Popcorn and Pints. That one's the mm-hmm. there's four of us. So, damn, they're the same exact thing as this. It's just non horror. So like this weekend we're doing um Saturday we're doing Step Brothers. Oh we're sure, yeah. Brothers, and then tomorrow night we're reviewing this movie called, which is another indie film, I believe. She walks the woods, and that's also on um, Amazon Prime and Tubi. Is that the is that the new uh, werewolf movie? No, I don't think so. Oh, oh, I don't think so. I don't know what I'm thinking of. I'll have to I'll have to look it up when we're done with this. I'll definitely I'll show you what I'm talking about. I just can't right. think of what it is. I believe I think it's called She Walks the Woods. 
And the funny thing is, I went to go see if it was on Amazon Prime or Tubi. It's on Amazon Prime, so I clicked it to go put it on my watch list, and I already watched it. I don't remember watching the movie. Ah, that happens to me. You know, I watch like a '70s horror movie, and then like three months later, be like, "Oh, this poster is great," and I click yes. on it. I'm like ten minutes in, I'm like, "Oh, he turns out to be a vampire." I've seen this movie. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's not even what it happened with me because I didn't watch it again yet. What it is is, you know how with um, Amazon Prime, it's like watch again. But watch it, guys. What the yeah. hell are you talking about, Prime? <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't don't offer that to me because I have no memory. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, I'm gonna watch it again. But yeah, the wheel. It, it just takes all the thinking out, and it makes me. I mean, there's a lot of movies on there because I asked a, quite a few people. There's a lot of movies on there I've never seen for both wheels, right. and it's just like, holy shit! And what I've what I have realized recently, which may sound nuts to some people. I love movies all across the board. Like I'm, I really, really do enjoy movies. Horror by far is my favorite, but just from starting this other show and reviewing the movies with the, I mean, reviewing the movies is fun as hell. I think that's more, that's almost as fun as watching them. It's up there with watching the movie. I'll say it's as fun yeah. depending on the movie. Cause Batman and Robin, it was more fun to review it than to watch it. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh-huh. Batman forever as well. You're just, you know, <laughs> there's those ones you're just like, oh, shit. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just again whenever you get a chance, no I rush. Will. Absolutely, absolutely. Five horror movies, and I'm sure you can come up with five easily. Yeah, if you know, movie- I took a bunch of notes before this because I can never, ever. I didn't know like if we we're gonna like talk about what we we're gonna talk about. So I, I was like, I can never, ever think of a single title or a director's name ever if I'm <laughs> interviewed. So I actually wrote some down. So I actually know what exactly what I'm going to send you. Awesome. I It's funny you say that because I was on my friend's show. Shout out to you, Ronell. It's called Oh Wells World. Uh, two weeks ago now, I think. And one of his questions that he asked me, he was like, he was like yo, so I, you know, I know you have the horror movie podcast and I started the other show. He's like, so what's the last five movies you watched? That was a hard question to answer. I was like, oh, I can tell you. I was like, I can tell you the next two that I'm about to watch, or the next one or two I'm about to watch because of you know the, my, the wheel we have. I couldn't. I couldn't answer that question. It would and, take me so long. Yeah. What's funny is I do because of these two shows now. I do three movies a week. I do three movies. I do Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But it's still just like, it's like a blur. <laughs> it's just like yeah. all. When, I can play what I'm whenever doing. Whenever I've watched Ruos recently, erases the last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it last. Oh, and, God. Now, the, the, but it was funny, though. He was, or no, because he, he said, name the last five horror movies you watched. I tried to. And I was like, I was like, you know, I'll just name the last five. And I, I think I ended up naming the four horror movies and maybe one something else. I don't remember. But I was like, all right. I was like, you name the last five movies you watched. And he was like, um, I think I watched, I was like, you think. I was like, yeah. yeah, I was like, that question is so easy now, is it? It's it's really not. And I know some people think, well, you're a podcaster, you know, you decide you do three movies a week, but it's just like, yeah, but I also have a life around that as well. Right. And, you know, I'm watching TV, watching things with the wife, and then I happen to watch three movies a week, sometimes more. Like I earlier I watched what did I say the movie was called? Demon Wind. Oh my God. Yes. And there's another Demon movie we're gonna check out tomorrow. Probably before I watch before I watch the other movie, I'm gonna watch this. It's called uh, Wrinkles the Clown. And oh yeah, yeah, that uh, that keeps coming up in my queue. It's oh you know what, you know what's a great independent movie, um, Clown. Have you seen yes. that? I I loved Clown. It's funny you mentioned that. I just reviewed that last. Either I don't know if it was Tuesday or Thursday. Like I was even asking my co-host. He was like, I don't remember if it was Tuesday or Thursday. I just know we did we the la- last week we did the mist and we did clown. Oh my god. Clown yeah. was awesome. Yeah, I was I was really surprised by it because it, it gets it gets mean. It gets yeah. like brutal. But uh, it um the story do you know the story like they made us they made a um a really good trailer and they said produced by Eli Roth. And Eli Roth, this is the story I heard. I don't know if it's true, but Eli Roth liked the trailer so much. He said, yeah, I will produce that movie. That's I want to awesome. see that movie. See? Uh, and they made this great, I, I love that movie because it's super simple and gets really scary and really gross. There was a, uh, I know what, with that movie, my, I remember, my co-host was saying he wished that um the final form, remember how he looks in the final form? Yeah, if yeah. we got more of that. Like a little earlier in the movie, 
I kind of like the slow. Yeah, it was it was a slow burn. It was, I I liked it for the slow. We both did enjoy the movie overall, but he was like, if they would have just showed a little bit more of that, just so you can see some cool kills with that, like. The movie was brutal, though, people like if, if you're somebody who if you've not seen this movie and if child children death <laughs> in a horror film bothers you, you're not going to want to see that clown movie. Oh, but who doesn't like a bunch of kids getting murdered? Come yeah, on. It's a horror everyone, movie. Everyone likes that. Here's my he say, here's my two things. Leave animals yeah. alone. Leave muscle. Oh, yeah. cars. Animals and muscle cars are, are what sets me off. <laughs> so Yo, like, I got I to gotta say. It, you can kill anybody in a movie. I don't care, but don't hurt the dog. Like yeah. don't kill the pets. There's a dog in my movie. And I gotta tell you no spoilers, but the dog, the dog's fine. Good. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Were any muscle cars harmed though? TBD. I don't know. I, you'll have to see it. There's a, I'm going to add a scene just for you. We're just out of nowhere. He walks into down to get the phone charger and then he takes a screwdriver and just like scrapes just just because that would be something name across the, <laughs> and then and then breaks the window and then and then uh, just out of nowhere and then people talk about that scene for the rest like what the fuck was that scene you guys? like why why and the, the funny if, if that i hope that if that happened which would be funny is like why did he do that <laughs> now here's, i want to write that scene here's here's the here's the reason why people <laughs> This is you the why right here. When we're done recording, you just send me your address. I will film that scene in your driveway without telling you. And then and then you wake up and you're like, damn that Greg Ivan Smith. <laughs> he did it. Luckily for me, I don't have a driveway here. And my cars are parked at my father's. And that guy's like Fine. a happy camper. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll do some rewrites. You can be on my Prius. There you go. See that? That's fine with me. But muscle cars don't harm muscle cars. I just, you know what it is? Because I, I just love them. Like I grew up, well, I, I mean, I didn't grow up with a car, but you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I grew up around them because of, you know, my father and all that stuff. So I just love muscle cars. I'm just like, and then you watch a lot of the horror movies and you see, you know, some of the 80s ones, you'll see muscle cars in them. And then you'll see, what was it? Death Proof. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. A lot of muscle car harm in that movie. A lot yep. it hurt my heart. Muscle car arm. Yeah, like the movie Clown, going back to that really quick, the kids getting killed didn't bother me at all. Not one bit. Because you know what it is? Because clowns are geared towards children. Yeah. And usually when we see, a, I mean, besides it, but usually when we see a lot of these killer clown movies, you they're usually going after adults. Yeah. yeah I like true. how this was just because kids love clowns. They're funny, which I got a question for you because I asked my, maybe my calls were talking about this. Was there ever a time in your childhood where you went to either had a clown at your birthday party or went to a, a friend's? Never. So where are they getting this from? Like a, movies that we, it's, I've never seen it either. Maybe it's older, an older generation. And my one of my sisters was once a guest child on the Bozo the Clown television show, though. Oh, that's awesome! And Bozo the Clown, like in our warped view of clowns now is pretty terrifying looking but it was like you know every saturday morning for a long mm -hmm. time so there you go but no no way because it's it's i mean as far as when they're involving children it's always at a birthday party i'm like who the hell is that for like the, the people that grew up rich they get clowns people come over and never. juggle <laughs> i've never had that i had pizza hut movies video games and a sleepover never yeah, a clown yeah, yeah. never no, wanted no. a clown either though never crossed my mind i've it's just one of those things. So people out there, if ever if you had a clown at your party, you know, drop that down below and let us know and why. You should get your wife to surprise you with a clown at your next birthday party. She's terrified <laughs> of clowns. But like a but like a scary clown. So like you are like, "Honey, can you go get the napkins?" and then you open up a cupboard and a clown pops out with like a plastic knife. That would be awesome. But the thing is, she she's terrified of clown like she <laughs> she threatened to cut my brother because yeah. he has a I don't know if it was figurines or whatever the hell he has some collection of something but with like clown like clowns and she said to him very at a very serious tone Henry if you take those down I'm gonna cut you 
Nice. We were at his house, by the way. <laughs> nice. And what nice. did he do? He closed the cabinet and got down from whatever he was standing on. He's like, all right. He's like, never mind. I was like, just get him. But I was talking to him later on, and I was like, look, I was like, if she really pulled the blade out from somewhere and she was coming after you, I was like, that's just between you and her. He's like, I, he's like, I understand. He's like, I should have put myself in that situation. <laughs> like, I had to wow. step out of the way. But uh, maybe not for your birthday party then. No, no, I don't. Because then I'm going to have to blame you. And then, you know, I'm like, listen, Greg th- thought this would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys, man. If you get me in trouble with the wife, I'm taking everybody down with me. <laughs> it's married life. You get it. <laughs> you get it. Absolutely. Especially after quarantine. Oh, every, every everything's on edge. Well, just to see, you know, she, so she works, she works in a doctor's office, does a bunch of front end stuff. I forgot what she tells me a bunch of times, but anyway, so they didn't shut down. I mean, they may have for a few days, mm-hmm. but they didn't like that. Cause they can't. Yeah. And on top of that, it's an OBG, OBGYN office, but for the state, I, so I've been home working. She's been going back and forth to work. So we have that, the, at least those eight hours eight hours plus a part of not having to bump heads, so to speak throughout the whole day. Like if we both worked from home, we'd get on each other's nerves. All right. You want to know what's really good for your marriage. Here's what's really good for your marriage. Write a script and then drive across the country and then be isolated in a blizzard for a whole winter and make a movie together. And that's all you're doing (laughs) for months that's really good for your relationship. You have to have a strong, Michael and I have been together for almost 25 years. That's awesome. And, yeah. But if one of us is murdered by the end of this process, it won't be a big surprise to either of us. Just put it in the movie. That's all. Boom. I know it's actually a good plot for a movie. You know, like this becomes like a documentary. Like I start making this horror movie and it yep. just becomes about Michael going crazy and murdering me because and this he's will be part, again, this will be- directing him. This will be in the documentary. Part of that documentary will be him. This is what's going to set Michael over the edge because he heard me tell you not to harm a muscle car. You had him do it in a movie. There you and go. Boom. It was the, it is the muscle car. <laughs> yeah, it's all the muscle cars. <laughs> over the edge. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you for helping to end my marriage. I appreciate no, it. I'm trying to help end the movie, not the marriage. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Either way. As long as we have a good ending, as long as the movie does well. I, I really do think you guys are going to do good with it, though. I'm really good with it because, again, you have you have the passion for it. And I feel like a lot of the indie people, they have the passion for it. And being good people doesn't necessarily mean a dollar amount. It just means you might get you're going to get a lot of people. You're going to get a lot of eyes on it. You're going to get a lot of eyes on your talent, which I think is sometimes it's more important than the dollar amount because you reach for that dollar amount too soon and you're just going to get undershot so to speak or underpaid yeah. so i really feel that you guys i think that it's going to be really good and i think it's I, I love that it's in upstate new york like about what about 45 minutes from where i grew up that i never yeah. thought that, that would happen yeah well and, it's they've been i gotta tell you amsterdam's been amazing the everyone we've met has been incredibly supportive we were at the um hardware store yesterday i was getting little um empty syringes to like for blood mm-hmm. you know like and um i said she said oh I, these don't come with needles or or hose tubes and i'm like oh no they're just for fake blood and she said oh, are you making the horror movie i don't know how she heard about it but that, i was like yeah how do you yeah we are we're making See, a horror movie now if, okay. if that was the town i grew up in like are you making a horror movie yeah how'd you hear about it that black guy That's over there awesome. he keeps telling everybody <laughs> but that well that right, seriously, that that stuff right there is awesome. Because again, you don't think about that. Like in up in this the capital region of a horror. I mean, there's been I know there's been a couple movies shot around here now, but a horror movie. I've never. I'm just like when Anthony, again when Anthony sent me that message, I was like, yes, hell yes. Yeah. Well, the cool thing about this area, and you know, I grew up in New England, so we started shooting in November, and it's November and there's that period between the snow in the spring where the snow melts and nothing's growing yet. Mm -hmm. That looks exactly the same. It's like, there are no leaves on the trees. It's sort of like muddy sort of brownish grass. 
and nothing's really happening yet. So the continuity, I think, is going to work well. And there's something um, bleak about it. And like, you're just like waiting for the next season. It's like mm -hmm. that in between. And it's still bloody cold out. There's a lot of scenes where um, Michael's character uh, wakes up from sleepwalking out in a field. Oh. And we shot the first time we shot one, it was um, 630 in the morning. And it was, I think it was 27 degrees, 28 degrees. No fun. And I was like chasing him with the camera back to the house. I'm like, slow down. You're going too far. He's like, I can't feel my feet. I can't feel my feet. <laughs> oh, uh, I can't wait to see this movie. Well, I will keep you posted um, when we, it's going to be months from now, but we are looking forward to getting back to uh, filming. And then, um, and then it will just be on me to edit it. And, um, and then when I'm a trillionaire, I will come back on your podcast and thank you for being our first press. I will appreciate that greatly. Yeah. And that's how I will blow up people. Like, Hey, I'm go. on this podcast. You can, you can help run the panel that I have at the con. How about that? So, I would and love that. That way you get free press. See, it's all, it's yeah. all like you can take, right? Yeah. That's, it's I mean, Shit, I'm happy. I'd be happy with that. Honestly, I'm being dead serious. I'd be happy with that. And people, again, that's one of those things where people don't think of those opportunities because there's no dollar amount behind it. But I'm like, look, you're getting to go on a panel to talk horror movies in front of God knows how many people and also talk about what you do. Hey, my name is Aaron. I'm a horror podcast on my podcast called Horror Research 30. I'm doing this panel, blah, blah, blah. Here's some business cards, by the way, people, which I always hand those out at panels. I mean, it's you got to sell yourself somehow. You got to sell. It's all a hustle. Yeah. It's all the hustle. Oh my God. Well, thank you for having me on. This has of been course. Awesome. Thanks and again uh, for coming on. And I'm sure I know we'll do this again. Yeah. Um, if there's any plugs or anything you want to do, you could do it. Feel free to do it. Uh, my, Oh, uh, if you have, um, you know, trauma films and like toxic Avenger, mm -hmm. uh, Troma Troma has a streaming uh, streaming platform now called I think it's called Watch Troma now, and uh, they bought four of my short horror films. Oh, that's awesome! So uh, they're screening Eggshell, which was the one I mentioned that we did during the pandemic, mm -hmm. which is only two minutes long, and they bought um, Ganymede, which is a B movie zombie horror movie about high school students debating high school zombie students debating whether or not to eat the teachers that are locked in the office. And then they bought Scary Larry, which is a 1954 um, sort of urban legend revenge movie. Nice. And um, they bought the the um, original short to remission, which uh, is premiering uh, soon. I'm not sure. So I'll, I'll plug those for, and then just, you know, any, anyone who's interested in, um, uh, learning more about the film, they, if they go to Seed and Spark, which is a fundraising platform, mm -hmm. uh, and type in Remission, uh, Remission the movie, uh, it'll come or Remission the film. I think it's Remission the movie will come up, and um, anyone can reach out, and I would be happy to take donations for our funds, and happy to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's been it's been really fun. It's been fun getting growing the audience. So I appreciate your help in that. A lot. Oh, anytime. Anytime. This like again, this is I love doing this. I made a podcast for it, horror movies. So I'm, anytime you want to come on and talk some horror, review a movie, promote your stuff. Awesome. You know how to get in contact oh, with me, man. And bad movies live with Greg Benson. I think February twenty sixth, we're gonna be watching uh Basket Case. Yes. Yes. Oh, I gotta so, tune in for that. When you get yeah. a chance, can you just I know you've sent me links before. Can you just resend me those links and then the ones you just mentioned? You got it. We'll do. And um, yeah, I mean, I I can't wait. And by the way, people, all the links, as you know, will be down below on the YouTube and all your other distributions and all that fun stuff. Awesome. But I do want to thank you again for coming on. Had a great time. And I thank hate to you. do this, and but uh, thank you, Michael Anthony. Patrick, my husband says hi and thank you as well. And if we both survive this, we'll come on together. That would be great. <laughs> I don't think I had a couple on yet. If I did, maybe I, I I don't remember. I've had if I had a couple on before. I'm sorry if I forgot that you guys were a couple or whatever the case may be. <laughs> like, I, I, there's just one me and one brain. There's I understand. I can't remember. 
I will have forgotten we did this in three minutes because my brain only See? holds. I'm like a goldfish. I'm pretty much the same way. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Awesome. But tell those of you out there, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, I'll see you in your nightmare.